Do you use design to be provocative in your organizations? To what extent is that the goal? You know, and obviously for you, there's, there's an end because you have a new product, but in terms of how your, your organizations work it is, is design. You're, you're describing design as being solution-based as opposed to being provocative. I'm just curious if there's a... Um, Not that those are mutually exclusive. Well, that's what yeah. I'm curious about, how that, how, how that feels for you guys. In this year, there's been inside Google, everyone's kind of saying technology sucks, computer sucks, and that's provocative coming from a company that lives in technology, lives in computers, and, and, uh, and the provocation is that how do we get it out of the way so we just all benefit from technology <coughs> without it being there? Um, um, that's, that's what I would say is provocative, but at the end result, hopefully, it should be something seamless, effortless, you don't even see it, notice it. Uh, in the product side, in the communication side, are probably and more provocative because you know everyone's like, totally ignoring every message on the planet. So you have to find some little bit of magic or something that you know jolts them out of you know the day-to-day -day habits and go, oh wow, that's kind of cool. Because for us, it is a little bit different. I mean, I I think uh, if we just looked at it from an effect effectivity perspective, it would it would allow you to have stuff that that it doesn't get noticed at times, you know, and that's, that's a part of design. But in the communication business, you have to force people to take notice. You have to, you know, uh, invoke a, an immediate response. So provo provocation is a, just a core part of what we have to do. I mean, I think there can be provocation in the product side too that's really important. It's just a question of, I mean, to me, provocation is just distance from incrementality. Like, are you trying to make something slightly better every day, like Amazon Web Services or something, or are you doing major leapfrog innovation where you're putting something out there that the risk is higher because the potential reward is higher, changing a behavior, like the way touch just happened and all of a sudden everyone's doing, you know, interacting haptically and whatnot. I think that those kinds of risks are in the sort of fitness landscape, to use your evolutionary example, bigger risks with potentially bigger outcomes, more disruptive outcomes, so I, that's provocation. I totally agree, but the reason why those touch things wins, it wasn't going to disrupt this technology. It's Not because 18 no, months old would find it natural to use it. So that's all totally, I'm saying. Totally, like it's, yeah. it's not provocative to provocative, it's provocative to get to the natural human state. And yeah, you have to do big leaps to get there, but at the end, it's like, the proof is like when 18 months, you know, kids, my, ne my nephew literally like knows how to yeah, tap yeah. it. It's like, it's because we got it all out of the way. Agreed. You know, Bob, what I'm just thinking about is it's funny how simplicity can be provocative in a complex organization. <laughs> so yeah. in a way, disruption, provocation doesn't necessarily come in these big forms. Yeah. Sometimes like touch, it comes in the really simple things. Do you guys like being provocative? Do you, within your own organizations, are you like, yeah, I'm the one who's gonna push people along, poke? Sure. Yeah. yeah, right? That's, yeah, that's, that, that's, what, that's what you want. What's the downside it's of being the, of the pr provocateur? What, well, what's the downside? I mean, you have to deliver on it, right? I mean, you say something pretty provocative, you've gotta have something to back it up, or you're just the person that's saying mm -hmm. wild things in the corner, right? So, you know, I mean, that's what I'm talking about, the speed versus quality. I mean. It's kind of easier to go with speed because if you aspire to a higher level of quality, you actually have to deliver and you have to ask yourself really tough questions. So I, I don't think it's necessarily easy to do it because I, I want to deliver on it, not just poke. I right? think you can provoke with a question, though. I mean, uh, just yeah. an, you know, an alternative approach to the problem, a reframing yeah. can be provocative, right? It's not necessarily arrogance saying, you know, I have... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm the smartest or most creative person in the room. That I, I does I don't think flies. It's it's, and uh, you know, in terms of outcomes, I think products that engage people because they have some of that quality. They they're not different in a meaningless way. They're they're different because well, I didn't really think of that possibility. That's provocative, I think. What when uh, I showed the whole team, I, I took them to a room and I showed them the first design that was just a sketch. So they came on the boat and started telling me, the plastic guy, the metal guy, the engineer, one by one, why none of this can be done. <laughs> Absolutely none of this. So it was very frustrating. So what I had to do is take the last product they did, put it on the table, and said, okay, this is 
really not a great product. You know, I, I so you smash it with a hammer. I used <laughs> even less, less nice words. I, tell, I, I told them, tell me one good thing about it. And then we started to go through the process and I showed them that everything is bad. The way you carbonate, the sound, the looks, the materials, everything. So we went step by step. And in the end of the meeting, two people left the room. One of them actually left the company. It was quite a provocative meeting, but it was a must meeting for everything that happened afterwards. You know, people understood that what we had before is not, is not the way to go. So whether they find a way right now to do it or not, they need to find a way. So I think sometimes it's just a must. I think you can be provocative and um, you can actually be a disruptor. Uh, I don't like labels on anyone, but you also, what you're talking about is you had the leadership capabilities and you own the project. And when you are being provocative and you force people to see it your way or see it a different way or get out of the way they've been doing things, um, they see the leadership in you and the responsibility that you're taking on for that project. And they'll, they'll come to light with it. And that's what you were just talking about. Do you think, of, uh, I actually think to be a leader, you have to be provocative. And I think the most provocative people within Google are not the designers, I don't think. It's like Larry and Sergey. They'll start, I'm sure it's the same, you know, there's a lot at the, the top. Um, so uh, um, I, don't, I, don't, I think anyone who's leading things from one place to another place has to, has a clear, paint a clear, provocative picture, or ask a clear, provocative question. I believe that CEOs are designers. They just don't know that they are. <laughs> you know, they're they're dealing with with ones. you know right. with chaotic, difficult problems that don't really have answers. That they have to juggle. They're getting lots of input, and they're constantly shifting. You know, it's ironic that they don't see themselves, and they don't always uh, appreciate what design is doing because that's really what they're you know what they're. Also it, it goes doing. right back to like what. How do you define it? If it's to do, if design, you look it up. It's like to do anything with intent, as you were saying, uh, to shape how we experience the world. That's like, who isn't a designer? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a good question. I mean, what does define a designer? Total insecurity. <laughs> <laughs> MBAs are trained for a world that follows a certain kind of order. Designers are trained for a world that anything can happen. I think what our user experience and our user designers have done is said, this needs to apply. They want the, the broadest uh, set of problems to solve. You'll be able to do this and this and this and this, and that's the thing that seems to spark.